some of the most fundamental questions that we have to answer in life are related to the question of identity. Who are we? Identity, of course, tends to be multifaceted, rooted in some factors that are truly unchangeable, such as race and gender, ethnicity or national origin and others that may develop and change over time, such as health status and age or orientation, or others that are potentially much more in flux according to present circumstances, perhaps education or socioeconomic level, political ideology or even denominational preferences. Yet with all these factors and many, many others at play, People can get confused, if not become a bit unhinged, and identity itself can end up being the source of much turmoil in the lives of individuals and families, and a potential force that creates division in communities and even in whole societies and the world. But today, as we do each year, we are invited to focus on two identity questions that are most fundamental to our lives as we ask the first question, who is God? And the second, who are we in relation to him? On this annual solemnity, we affirm that God has been revealed to be a trinity of persons in one divine existence, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, harmoniously living in perfect communion that is divine life and love, a life-giving love so powerful that it has spilled over into the universe as the creating and sustaining force which underpins it, and the presence and effects of this divine life and love can be particularly witnessed in the redeeming and sanctifying activity which is ongoing in the world in which we live, even at this very moment. So if that is God, who are we? We are nothing less than the crown of all God's creation the creature whose capacities of mind and spirit reveal that we have been fashioned in God's image. For as fascinating and, if not always, delightful as all the other creatures that we share this world with may be, and as supposedly as close to us as some are on what is the evolutionary chain, the undeniable truth is that we are still waiting for the great apes to paint a ceiling like that of the Sistine Chapel or write the literary works such as Shakespeare or to compose a symphony like that of Beethoven. Indeed, human beings are the most unique of all God's creatures. Clearly and sometimes sadly still, acting at times with animalistic instinct and baseness, but still always capable of rising very high above that because we are endowed with the potential to reflect the order, the harmony, the beauty of divine existence. And we can do so, so long as we place our faith in God the Father, and dispose ourselves to cooperate with the redeeming work of Jesus Christ, his Son, and the ongoing sanctification being brought out even now, as it will until the end of time, by the Holy Spirit. So when we look to discover our most fundamental identity, in truth, it is found only in our relationship to the triune God who is the source of our very being and the reason for our very existence. To deny God or to forget that truth leaves many 
to focus far too much on the unchangeable accidents of their existence, like race, ethnicity, gender, orientation, and national origin, or on changeable circumstances or choices that do shape their identity, all of which, though, when overemphasized, have the very dangerous potential to create division, and which tragically, at times, that division escalates to hatred toward those perceived as other or different. And then violence can occur, as is so sadly evident, still in our nation and our world this day. Yet if only instead, we as human beings could constantly try to discover and rediscover the truth of the most fundamental sameness that we share as creatures fashioned in the image of God, we could come ever closer to knowing that peace that flows from the unity and harmony that is the life of the triune God in whose likeness we are not only created, but also designed to live. Then and only then will we experience what God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, intends us to enjoy, and something that we all innately desire, which is nothing less than a foretaste of heavenly harmony and peace, even here on earth an experience too rarely and fleetingly glimpsed in this world. Why? Because it is still a world populated and troubled by human beings who deny the God by whom they have been made and so are incapable of discerning their truest identity nor ever reaching their highest human potential. Therefore, our world is always desperately in need of our influence as believers who know God and who appreciate ourselves in relationship to him. It is a world on which we can never give up, a world that demands our best hopes, our prayers, and always our efforts to try to improve it. Why? because it is a world still loved by the triune God who is at work even now creating, redeeming, and sanctifying it.